everybody, welcome to the Homestead. What we're going to do today is talk about our second wind turbine. Uh, we did a video on our first wind turbine uh, that we're installing on our Homestead. It's called the Primus Air 40. This one is the second uh, turbine that we're going to be installing. This is called the Wind Blue. It's the DC 540 uh, PMA permanent uh, magnet alternator. And uh, this is from Wind uh, Blue Power. I'm sorry, yeah, Wind Blue Power. Uh, you can look them up online and see some of their products. Um, this is their PMA, their permanent magnet alternator. And uh, it's a two blade system. This system was given to us by a friend of ours named Travis Huey, who you may have uh, heard about in some of our past videos. He is one of the ones primarily responsible for us getting and designing uh, the, the aquaponics system that we have here working on the homestead that's inside of our greenhouse. Uh, he bought this, I guess, a number of years ago and never really got it into operation. He just didn't have the wind power uh, over where he lives. And so he sent it to us. And because we do have a lot of wind that we get here on the homestead. And we're going to put this up and see how it performs. Uh, so I'm very appreciative of him giving us this and allowing us to go ahead and install it here on the homestead. But a little bit about this uh, wind turbine. This is the Wind Blue. Like I said, it's their PMA. It's called the DC 540. And the DC 540 uh, is one of their best uh, upper end models. And uh, we, I looked up some of the stats, and the stats were pretty impressive on this. I think at, we have a 24 volt system uh, for both of our battery banks that we're using. Uh, the first turbine that you saw, the Primus Air 40, is going to be on one battery bank, and this DC 540 from Wind Blue is going to be on the second battery bank. Both battery banks are 24 volt systems. This, to produce about 24 volts, you need to get it to just before 300 RPMs. And at about 300 RPMs, you're going to be producing about 24 volts and about 6 amps of power uh, for our system. So at about that point, you'll start to be able to charge our 24 volt battery bank and get about 6 amps of power, which is pretty good. Uh, 6 amps of power is not a lot. Some people would think that's not a lot of power, but really, if I can get it to be almost like a trickle charger, working in conjunction with our solar panels, uh, being able to work 24 hours a day because the wind is available to work 24 hours a day, uh, 6 amps can add up to a lot in keeping our battery banks uh, charged up. And so this could go a long way at keeping our banks. Now there's a lot of times where I think we, we can get more than 300 RPMs or 6 amps out of, our, out of this wind turbine, especially with the winds that blow around here. Uh, but it's, I think it's, that's very good to be able to get about 300 RPMs or 6 amps out of, out of a wind turbine and use that to help keep our batteries uh, in, in a healthy state, uh, keeping uh, that, uh, those amps coming on those batteries um, you know, basically in a 24 hour period for 24 hours or however long the wind's blowing. 6 amps is really good for a battery bank. But there may come a point in time when you know, the batteries are charged, the sun is out, and the wind is blowing, and this thing is basically spinning and producing power that we don't need. Uh, what can happen is, on this particular model, not the Primus model that we showed you before, but on this model, you could produce power that could actually damage your batteries. And so there is a way around that. And a lot of people, what they do is they have what's called dump controllers, or uh, dump resistors, or diversion loads, or dump loads. There's lots of different names for them. But basically, you're going to take power that uh, you don't need because the batteries are charged, and this thing's going to continue to produce power. Uh, the solar panels are going to stop, and uh, the charge controller is going to stop them from producing power. However, this thing is going to keep on producing power because it's tied directly to the battery bank. So what you do in that case is you have a diversion load controller. And that's a box that sits uh, basically on your batteries, or connected to your batteries, and it sees when uh, the batteries are full. And when the batteries are full, it then begins to divert or dump the extra load, the extra energy, into a bank of resistors. And that's what I have here. This bank of resistors uh, was purchased by Missouri Wind and Solar. And what this will do is that once that extra energy uh, gets diverted off the battery banks, it's going to go into these resistors, and these resistors will produce heat. And that's really convenient in the wintertime because we'll be able to use these um, in uh, our office, we're going to mount these in the office and that will give us a heated office in that trailer that we have uh, that we use to uh, work on our laptops and charge our laptops and things of that nature. And so we're going to mount this right next to the battery box um, inside, uh, basically less than five feet away or so, um, into uh, the, 
the trailer, and this will be wired up to DC power right from the battery bank so that when that diversion load kicks in, diversion load controller kicks in, it'll be able to send that energy right into this resistor bank and be able to heat um, our office and use that excess energy that the battery bank doesn't need. And so, unless you have a specific wind turbine like the Primus Air 40 or one like it, you will need a dump load uh, for your wind turbine. And so that's what we decided to do is go ahead and use this resistor battery bank to uh, resistor bank to go ahead and offload that extra energy. Now you see that this uh, turbine is only a two blade system. Now there's lots of different bladed systems out there. You can get three blade, five blade, seven blade, up to I think uh, nine blade and eleven blade systems. Um, the problem is when you, when you go with more and higher uh, number of blades. Uh, you end up losing efficiency in the amount of energy you can produce. Uh, two blades and three blades are generally thought to be the best. Now there are pe people out there like Missouri Wind and Solar and some others who produce five, five blade or seven blade systems, um, but the object I think from what I understand and reading about wind power is that you need to keep it, keep it an odd number. With the exception of a two blade system. A two blade system, obviously two is even an even number. But anything higher than that, it needs to be three, five, seven, an odd number of blades. And that is all about efficiency. There's a lot of math and science that goes into why you need those numbers. Uh, and I'll let you guys look that up on your own. But this one's a two blade system. It should keep, keep the system very efficient. And uh, we're going to see how it performs out here. And uh, well, it's about, it stands at about five foot tall. So it's about a five foot wingspan on this blade turbine. Okay, to give you a close up, let's take a look at the wiring on the back of this. Uh, this particular PMA, Permanent Magnet Alternator, does have the ability to produce either DC power or three-phase AC power. So DC or AC. Uh, that's kind of convenient. You get, you get a number of different options with this configuration. Um, there's a knob on the back here. It's, it's labeled in red, and you can't maybe see it on the camera right now, but that knob will allow you to produce DC power. You can take the DC power out of that and run it down the tower. Or this right here, as it's configured right now, is ready for AC power. And it's called three-phase AC power. Now, what you need to do, if it's configured for three-phase AC power, and this is how we're going to run it, we're going to run, unlike the Primus wind turbine that you saw before, that's configured only for DC output, uh, the DC output on that turbine will just run down uh, the tower. This, however, is a lot cheaper to do. We have a basically extension cord uh, that we're going to run down the tower. It's uh, basically three three wires that run down, and it's a lot cheaper than buying uh, some of the uh, you know uh, eight gauge uh, wire that we're going to have to use for DC. But this three phase wire will just run down an AC uh, and all the way down to the battery bank, and then it will hit a rectifier, and that rectifier will then transfer that AC three phase AC power back to DC power. And then from there, we can run it right to the battery bank. So uh, what we're doing here uh, is gonna run three phase AC power. AC power can run a lot farther without losing any energy uh, than DC power can. So DC power, if you were to run this a long distance, you would lose a lot of energy in the process of that, of that travel. With the AC power, you don't lose any of that. And so uh, we're going to go ahead with this and use three-phase AC power all the way down the tower, all the way to the battery bank, hit a rectifier, and then from that rectifier, we'll go into uh, the bank itself. Here's a close-up of the resistors uh, that were provided by Missouri Wind and Solar. Uh, this was probably the lowest cost uh, set of resistor banks that I had found. I searched online to see um, you know, what these would cost. I knew I was going to have to have a dump load for uh, this wind turbine. And this one cost about a little less than 60 bucks, I think like $58. And so I got that from Missouri Wind and Solar. They had really the cheapest offering uh, for a dump load that I could find. The dump load controller, I'm using a Xantrex. I'll get a picture of that in another video. It's a Xantrex C40. And that is going to be the dump load controller that I use with this dump load set of resistor banks. Um, and uh, we're going to tie those together. And I'll do a no whole other video on the Primus and the Wind Blue uh, to show you how they're wired up and how they're working. So anyway, that's the resistor. That's the dump load bank that I got. It looks very uh, well put together. We're going to mount this on the wall inside the trailer and use this to heat the trailer. In the summertime, we don't get a lot of wind. So I don't think we're going to be able to use this or, or need it. And I may just turn the wind turbine off entirely because the wind just doesn't blow a whole lot here in the summertime. Well, I hope you found this video informative. 
Uh, this is the wind blue. Again, the wind blue power wind turbine. It's the DC 540 model. We're going to get this up in the next couple of days. We're going to show you videos of, of the whole process. And then we're going to walk through the wiring and how it's all wired together so that maybe if you are ever interested in doing a project like this yourself, you, will, can, you can see how we've done it. And that may give you a little bit of inspiration uh, on how you can do it as well. All right. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and American Homestead on Facebook. Or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. We really appreciate Appreciate you hitting the thumbs up button on all of our videos. And so we'll see you next time on the homestead. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really makes creating these videos worthwhile. If you want to make sure to never miss a new video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Now you can get your homesteading questions answered. Visit us at our contact page on anamericanhomestead.com and send us your questions. Maybe we'll pick your question for a future video or article on our website.